Okay, everybody, so as promised on my previous video on measures of center, I'm now going to be putting together a measures of variation video where we try to calculate the variance and standard deviation of a data set. So let's pretend like we did the same sort of sampling as the previous video. Um, we're going to randomly sample a party to find out the ages of kids at the party. And we found a four-year-old, a six-year-old, an eight-year-old, a four-year-old, and a ten-year-old. And this is just a sample, so this, this isn't the entire population of kids. There are more than five kids, but from who we sampled, those are the ages we got. And the question is, how much does, uh, do the ages of the kids at the party uh, vary? Um, a, a, another way to think about this, let's, let's think about sports. Let's think about these as being points that a particular player scores per game. So in one game we looked at, he scored four points. In another game we watched, he scored six. In another game we watched, he scored eight. What we want to figure out with measures of variation is how consistent is this kid? How much does his scoring vary? Right? Um, so while we can use a measure of center to find out their average, it doesn't really tell us how consistent they are. And that's kind of what we want to find out with variance and standard deviation. Okay, so before we get into the equations for those two things, we first need to find our mean. And uh, if you did not watch our previous video, let's go ahead and quickly find the mean. So the mean is represented by x with a line on top. And the equation is a sum of all the values that we collected divided by our sample size. So the sum means you add them all up. So you're going to add up all of your samples. You're going to sum them all up. So 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4 plus 10 divided by our sample size. Well, we collected 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 samples. So that's the size of our samples. That's the sample size. And you just use your calculator to do the math there. This will give you 32 divided by 5, which gives us 6.4 years old. Or if you want to think about it in terms of basketball, now let's, you can say that's 6.4 points per game. So um, let's check to see if we rounded this correctly. Well, we can only have one additional decimal place in our answer compared to our uh, data. So if you look, our data is all whole numbers. There's no like 4.1 or 6.25 or 8.356. They're all whole numbers. So this is our one additional decimal place. If we had a 10.2 years old, then, um, then we could have an additional decimal place here. We can say 6.40, right? But for now, because we only have whole numbers. This is our allowed one additional decimal place. Um, sample standard deviation. We're going to call it sample standard deviation because it's based off a sample. The population standard deviation equation is going to be a little bit different. But this is our sample standard deviation equation, and we use a simple S to represent that. So our sample standard deviation equals the square root of the sum of our sample values minus the sample mean squared divided by n minus 1, right? The sample size minus 1. Now, don't get freaked out about this. It looks kind of crazy, but let's, let's walk through a simple way of of doing this by hand in case you're asked to do that for a, a homework assignment. Obviously, this sort of thing would probably be easier on an Excel spreadsheet um, or some sort of computer program. But if you're asked to do this by hand, what I recommend you do is you create a table. In one column, we're going to list all our values that we collected from our sampling. So four years old, six years old, eight years old, four years old, ten years old. We're going to have a column for all of the x minus the means, minus the sample means. And why do we do that? Well, because we need to sum all of them up after we square them. So we need to get all those values. So uh, 4 minus 6.4 is minus 2.4. 6 minus 6.4 is minus 0.4. 8 minus 6.4 is minus, I'm sorry, that's positive, is just 1.6. Don't think about that one. 
4 minus 6.4, that's minus 2.4. 10 minus 6.4 is 3.6. Again, don't think about this guy. That's a mistake. Okay, so what do we need to put here then, you think? Well, we eventually need to sum up all of those numbers after we square them. So let's go ahead and put a column of us squaring that number. Right, so we're going to take this value and just square it. x minus the mean, so these are all x minus the means. And now we're going to square all of those values. So in your calculator, you would square 2.4. You use your little square button. Now you might have an xy button in your calculator you can use too. So if you square two, minus 2.4, it's going to be a positive 5.76. Remember, after you square something, it's always going to be a positive number. So negative 0 0.4 squared is 0 0.16. 1 1.6, the positive 1 1.6 squared is 2.56. Negative 2.4 squared is 5.76. And then 3.6 squared is 12.96. Okay, so what do you think the next step is? Well, we've gotten all of we've we've calculated all of the x minus the means squared, and we're told in the equation that we need to add them all up. So we need to sum this. So if we let me put the equation here, if we summed all of the x minus the means squared, what would it equal? Well, add these all up in your calculator, and you'll see that it equals twenty-seven point two. Okay, and now we can put that number into that equation. So we have the square root of 27.2 divided by our sample size, which is 5 minus 1, right? So obviously that's going to be 4. So what you really have is the square root of 27.2 over 4. Okay, so that's about 2... Point six and zero seven. You have a bunch of numbers, and the units are years old. So the years, uh, but we have a round off rule here. You remember, it's the same as the mean. So if all our values in our data set are whole numbers, and the rule is we can only have one additional decimal place as compared to our original data set then this has to be rounded off to 2.6 years old. So the average age, I'm sorry, the standard, the sample standard deviation of, um, of the kids at the party is 2.6 years. You don't have to say old. That really doesn't really make any sense here. So the average age is 6.4, but in terms of how much this varies, the value we say is 2.6 years. That's the that's the measurement of variation standard through standard deviation. Now, we also use vari variance to measure how much something varies, right? Let's see. Let's put it over here. Sample variance. So the equation or the symbol for simple. The symbol for sample variance is just standard deviation squared. So we're going to take our standard deviation and just square it. So if you square this, square the original value, it'll be 6.8 years, and we're going to square it. Remember, it's squared years because we squared this value. Now, if you Think about it, what we really did is just we found this number, right? We basically just found this value before we square rooted it. That's your sample variance. And the only reason you ever square root this to get standard deviation is because of the units. 2.6 years we understand. But the units in here, remember this is a squared value, so the units are squared. Years squared. Well, have you ever heard of that used before? Have you ever heard anyone talk about years squared or point squared? Not really. So this is why we use standard deviation often when we talk about how much something varies because the units don't make any sense when we talk about variance. Year squared, that's kind of a weird thing to talk about. Okay, so how about population? 
What about population standard deviation and population variance? Well, it's really the same sort of equation. Let's take a look at it quickly. We have a different symbol now. The symbol is going to be sigma. And the equation, maybe on the surface, might look different, but it's only because of notation. We're going to sum our sample values minus the population mean squared divided by our population size. Okay? So if we're going to relate it to what we just did a second ago, let's compare these equations here. Here is our standard deviation for a sample. Here is our standard deviation for an entire population. You still have to sum up stuff. You still have to take into account your samples. And you still minus the mean, but we just use a different notation to note population mean versus sample mean. And you still have to square stuff. And now, we use the entire population here versus our n minus 1 for our sample there. So if you're using, if you're trying to figure the population standard deviation for the same data set, right, the same sort of scenario, uh, assuming that we only have five kids at the party, right, that's the entire population, just five kids, then you still use the same mean, but now this n equals 5 as opposed to having a, a 5 minus 1 in our denominator here, right? So it'll be the same sort of thing. And then just like with sample variance, our population variance is just our standard deviation squared. So if you want to see this worked out, this value is still 27.2 using the same method we talked about earlier, right? Using this method, using the, the, uh, um, the table. But now instead of divided by 4, we're going to divide by 5, assuming that we only have 5 kids at the party. That means there's only 5 total. That's, a, that's our population, only 5 in there. And this would give you 2.3 years. And it's approximate because I already ran it off for you. And then, if you square that, you use your calculator to square it. So 2.3 years squared equals 5.4. I'm going to round that off for you, too. Years squared. Okay? So there, you would your, there, there are your answers for the population version of that. Hope that helps a little bit. Good luck as you continue working on measures of variance, variation stuff.